I love this story of Abram. And the Bible was saying that he became wealthy with many livestock. And, and, and it got so, so much that he could not continue any longer with Lot. I, I, I want you to see something because many of you, you you've, you've done well. But God wants to do greater. Abram can look at his situation, and his situation looks great. He became prosperous. His livestock has grown. His wealth has grown. But God still wanted to do something greater. He had to come to Lot, and he said, Lot, I, I think it's time that we, we part our way. Because there's too much at stake. And, and, and what's happening is we are family, we are kindred, and, and our people aren't getting along. Now, it did not say Lot was wealthy. It said Abram was wealthy. Did it not? Many of us are holding on to people thinking... They are the ones that help us get where we are. And God is saying, I'm bringing you into a, a season that requires great faith. I'm, I'm not talking about any faith. I'm, I'm talking about mountain moving faith. I'm talking about giant killing faith. I'm talking about walking on the water faith. I'm talking about raising the dead kind of faith. I'm talking about great faith. If there's greater, then we're coming into a season where we need great faith. Great faith. Hey, look at your neighbor and say great faith. Great faith. Great faith. I, 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 I'm not talking just about any kind of faith. I'm talking about Great faith. How many know there, there is a difference? And even Jesus began to look out. And there are different ones that begin to move on him. And he says, I haven't seen such great faith. Which, which tells me there's different levels of faith. <laughs> Jesus said, hey, I'll, I'll come to your house. To the ruler, and he said, wait, 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 wait. No, you don't need to come to my house. You, you don't need to come. I, I, I'm a man with authority, and I'm a man under authority. All I need you to do is just say a word. Speak a word. And all of a sudden, it just, Jesus like, wait. I haven't seen this kind of faith in all of Jerusalem. All of a sudden... There was another level of faith. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to go to a whole nother level. Yeah. Lot, Lot, his name, uh, it represents covering or veil. He, he, I, want, I want you to see something. Because many of you are, are, are relying on your job to be your provider. Now, the Lord may have given you the job, but the job is not your provider. The Lord may have opened the door for your career, but your career is not your provider. And Abram had to get to the place saying, you know what? Lot, you're going to have to go. I, I, I know I'm blessed. I know I have more cattle than I know what to do with. I have more people than I know what to do with. But we can no longer continue in this path. At, at some point, you got to get to the place saying, you know what? I'm not going to allow my flesh to get in the way of my faith. Because Lot represents covering. What covers you? Your flesh. 
So he had to get rid of the flesh. In order to walk into the fullness that God has for him. So here, look, 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 look what happens. He, he, he releases Lot. He says, wherever you go, I'll go the opposite. If you go left, I'll go right. If you go right, I'll go left. Now notice where Lot looks. Lot looks at Sodom. He looks at a land that's luscious. He looks at a land that looks prosperous. How many know your flesh will always lead you to what looks good? Come on. Your flesh will always lead you to what looks good in the natural. So he heads to the place and he pitches his tent outside of Sodom. And all of a sudden the Bible says that when Lot leaves Abram, the Lord begins to speak. Can I just tell you, when you begin to trust the Lord and when you begin to step out in faith, you're going to begin to hear the voice of the Lord like never before. If Even if people have left your life, I want you just to tune in because the Lord is trying to speak to you. Sometimes God has to relieve some people. Because they are a distraction to his voice. Come on, some of you, you got people in your life that are being a distraction to the voice of the Father. And notice when Abram hears from God, it's when Lot leaves. The Bible says when Lot left, the Lord spoke. When did the Lord speak? When Lot left. I don't know if anybody has left you. Anybody turned their back on you and walked out on you? Can I just tell you you're at the right place at the right time because the Lord wants to speak to you. He says, I just removed them out of your life because they were a distraction to my voice. They were a distraction to my word. And the word that I have for you in this season is greater than the people around you. So, so here, 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 get, get, get this. All of a sudden, the Lord speaks to him. He says, now, look everywhere else. Look, look to the east. Look to the west. Look to the north. Look to the south. Everything you see is yours. <laughs> Abram had no clue. Until the veil was removed. Lot, his name means veil or covering. Some of you, listen, some of you, you have people that are distractions. That they need to be removed out of your life. So that you can begin to see everything that God has for you. And what belongs to you. We're coming into this season of 5784. Listen, we need to get rid of some people that are a distraction. You might want to delete some people off of your phone or out, uh, off of your contacts. Say, I got, a, I, got, I got one contact that I need, and that's on my knees when I begin to pray. As long as I have a connection with the Father, all things are possible. As long as I have a connection with the Father, I can do great and mighty things. As long as I have a connection with the Father, I, I begin to grow, and my fruit uh, will remain. As long as I have a connection with the Father. Amen. I, I know there, there, there are many people that, that, that they've gone through some, some, some things. And, and, and many of you have testimonies. This house is full of testimonies. And every time we read this word, it's full of testimony. And what God did then, he's still doing today. He healed then, he's healing Today, he delivered then, he's delivering now. Amen. Is Rakita, where's Rakita? Where, come, come, all right, there you are, come on. I saw you earlier. Get over here. This, this girl's got a testimony. 
t- tell us, t- t- tell them what, what happened and what the Lord was doing in your life. So on, good morning, everyone. <laughs> on In April, uh, Bishop brought a word. Oh, sorry. In April, Bishop brought a word. And after the word, he said, he encouraged the congregation to increase our giving and trust God to increase our finances. So for me, it was difficult because I just had a baby and I had just gotten back to work. I didn't know where I was going to find the money. But the Lord laid it upon my heart to give an extra $100 a month, just $100. So I said, all right, Lord, I'm going to be obedient. (laughs) I have all this going on, but I'm going to do it. And on July 7th, I got a phone call, offered me a job, making more money than I've ever made, even for the position. (laughs) But that's not it. That's not where God stopped at. So a week later, I mean, I was so excited. I told everyone, all my friends on Facebook, Miss Katie, Miss Drew, I told everyone. Um, A week later, I went to work and I gave my notice. I was thinking I'm transitioning to a new job. And my boss said, well, is there anything we can do to keep you? And I said, well, if you match the offer, I'll consider staying. I love my job. They said, okay. Came back a couple of days later. Oh, we can't match the offer. It's too much. You'll be the highest paid employee in your position. I said, okay. Went on about my business. Two days later, my doctor came to me and said, we don't want to lose you as an employee. Not only are we going to give you more than what they offered you, we're going to give you a different position. And I said... amazing and my friends they're like I can't afford to tithe I can't afford to tithe and I'm like I can't afford not to I'm I'm telling you God is just I just encourage everyone to trust God in everything especially in your finances come on you know if that was you you would be standing up on your feet if that was your testimony See, that's, that's, just, that's just one. That's just one. It was, it was just two weeks ago or three weeks ago when, when a lady said, said she, she ended up getting a lot more. She came down here and testified. Y'all remember that just on a Sunday? Just, we were just having testimony Sunday. And all of a sudden, she got a hold of the word. And she began to declare it and begin to do what God's told her to do. And all of a sudden, she gets an increase. And, and, and not only get an increase, but the Lord, the Lord was like, listen, you need to pray for the lady that's over you. Because the lady was just hard to deal with. She just began to pray, and she didn't pray, you know, strike her dead. She began, she began to pray this. She began to pray, Lord, I pray blessings over her. I pray, Father God, that you would just bless her, that you would just minister to her, that you would just honor her, that you would just uh, fulfill your word in her life, that you would show yourself strong in her life. And then all of a sudden, two weeks later, that lady moves on. And then she takes the position getting paid two times what she was getting paid. Come on, somebody. Joanne, where's Joanne? She here. Joanne, come on. Come on over here. Bring that baby. Can you bring the, well, come on, bring the whole, whole family. This is a testimony and a half right here. Come on. I remember, I remember the Sunday you came up and, and you were just uh, sharing your testimony. Now, this is before your baby was born. Because when you came down, you, you, you were carrying her. But can you share your testimony? Praise God. Um, there's a song that says, Why then should I wait on your promises? You are faithful. And it says, I am standing on the promises you made. No more distance or delay. And I felt like um, 
bishop said one time, like, we have all these armies that are supposed to provide for us, and we have them just sitting down. We need to put the angels' army that we have at work because all these things, all we have to do is actually declare them because God had already provided. So um, as young as I am, <laughs> I married my husband, and we took um, a few we took time before, like, okay, we're going to start having a baby. But little did I know that it wasn't going to be that easy. And I'm like, I'm young. Why, you know, like, maybe it's just time, right? So then I'm like, first years go by, nothing happened. Second year, I'm like, okay, I'm not getting that young. So I'm like, let, let me go to the doctor. And then um, the doctor's like, oh, you know, in the beginning, like, oh, you're young. You know, it's not going to be a problem. And fast forward, they find out that um, I had a tube blocked, and they're like, okay, we're going to have surgery. And I'm like, okay, whatever it takes. Three years down the line, we have surgery. And I was like, if it's not a life or death, I don't want you to remove my tube. And, you know, I'll just find, I'll find, I'll figure it out later. So it wasn't life or death. We had, I had endometriosis. My tube was blocked. And I'm like, you can have a baby with one tube, like leave it alone. So I'm like, okay, cool. After a year later, after the surgery, no baby. And I'm like, what is going on? So as a woman that start weighing on you and us wanting to start a family and my husband being very supportive, thank God I had a husband like him. Because you know, as a woman, we're so hard on ourselves, especially for something that's supposed to come natural. And I'm like, and they're like, okay, um, if you have relaxer, it helps with, um, like it forms fibroids, so don't stop. Go natural. I'm like, okay, I'm going natural. Natural. No, baby. I'm like, come on. What is going on? And Pastor Whitney said, sometimes when you need things, God always provides, right? But certain blessings, you have to position yourself. And when it came to that, I grasped onto that word, and I said, I need to position myself to figure out what is going on because throughout this time of not having a baby, the depression that comes with it, the lack of that came with it, the crying that comes with it day in and day out at work, and like, what is wrong with me? Why is this not happening for me? And New Year came, and I said, and I said, I'm going to start fasting. And so... I told my husband, I'm like, I'm going to start fasting. He's like, fast what? Fast everything. I'm not eating nothing. I'm not doing nothing. I'm just fasting. And he's like, are you sure? Because I've never fasted before. And um, so then I grabbed onto that word, and I was drinking water and drinking juice, and I was praying. Instead of talking to my husband on my lunch break, I'm like, I'll have to talk to you another time. I'm reading my Bible. And I was just stuck in the word because I knew. And I told God, like, I want to have a baby this year. And then I said, or if it's not for me, and if you don't have that for me, I want you to put in my heart for me to be okay with that. And God planned, I guess he just wanted me to just rely on him. Like perm, getting uh, natural wasn't gonna do it. The doctor wasn't gonna do it. In and out the doctor, even one time, like the year before, um, after fasting, I'm like, we got a positive pregnancy test. You're like, we're so excited. I told my husband to hold it, but he wouldn't hold it. He's telling everybody, and they're like, oh, no, it's not a baby. It's false positive, right? And I'm like, come on, Jesus. I fasted. I did all the things that I could do. But I'm like, that is just the way the devil, because from fasting, it's like you can, it's like God speaks to you clearly. It's like, because all you could do is depend on him. And it's like to the point that I wasn't hot. Like people say that about fasting, but I didn't, I didn't know. But it's like I wasn't hungry. I wasn't like feel like I starved. Because, you know, they say if you're fast, you got to still look like you got it going on, like you're not fasting. So here I am losing weight. And people are like, oh, you look so slim. I'm like, oh, thank you. You know, keep it moving, waiting and waiting on God. And five years later, we took that test. Oh, and before we took that test, we got pregnant. And then I was like, still scared because out of all of these hopes that I had, 
And so I was in church on a Wednesday, I think, or Sunday. I saw um, Sister Petra, because I know she's like a prayer warrior. And I'm like, and I know my faith was not there because I'm like, is it going to happen? Is this it or is this not it? So I told her, can you just please pray for me and have faith with me? Because I didn't have enough for me to actually carry through and thinking that this is going to be okay. And so later on, being pregnant, I had my baby third trimester come. Then I'm screaming to everybody that I'm pregnant. And I'm like, and now I have my beautiful baby, Julianne. And God is faithful. And the thing is that, like they said, you don't, it's not what you're doing that makes him do what he does. It's because he looks after his word to perform it. So if you know the word and you stay in the word, he will give you the blessings that he has lined up for you. And I just pray that if you have something that is irking you and you know that God put that desire in your heart, he's just waiting for you to position yourself in the right place to open that door for you. Hello, everybody. I'm a little nervous, but to all of the married people, especially the men, it tells you in the Bible, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing. If you have a wife, tell you the cheat code. Pray with your wife. Everything that me and my wife pray about, we get it. And I mean everything because we come into agreement. I already knew she was going to get pregnant because we prayed. Yeah, Pastor, everything that I've ever prayed about with my wife, we've got everything. From jobs to health I know she was crying and going through the motions, and I understood it, but I knew. I knew she was coming. <laughs> Woo! Come on, church. Come on, Faith Coast. My, 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 my. Wow. What, what the Lord is saying today through these testimonies, just think if they would have gave up. If they have given, given up on having a baby. Some of you are in a give up season, and I'm here to tell you don't give up. What, what, what if she would have gave up on her, her career? said, well, it's just never going to happen. No, no, no. She believed that there was greater. What if they decided, you know what, let's not pray together. It's never going to happen. We tried it all. We tried it the way the doctor said to try it. We tried everything and just give up. Some of you are right there. Just want to give up. But the word of the Lord in this house, he says greater. Greater season is ahead greater season is ahead don't give up don't give up why because he's faithful to his word to perform I, I love your cheat code I'm going to steal it but he says as long as we pray together the Bible says we're two or three Touch and agree, it shall be established. What, what happens is the Bible says a, a, a double-minded man is unstable in, in all his ways. What happens is when they come together and they begin to pray, they're, they're unified. And all of a sudden, God can get the glory. Amen? How many believe that there's greater seasons ahead? You believe that? I want, I want you to stand on your feet. We're closing this. I, I, as we close, the, close this, I, listen. I just feel like blessing somebody. James, come here. I, I bless you with a, a, a jacket, but I got $50. I want to bless you with. You're always faithful. Appreciate you. You're all... This, this, this young man, he's always faithful. He's here both services. 
He's here sitting, shouting me down, then he's serving in the next. But I tell you, I'm thankful. You, you help make Faith Coast what Faith Coast is. And I appreciate you. Honor you this morning. Gerson, come here. I, I, I just feel like blessing some of the young people today. Gerson uh, started filling in with the drums, and I tell you, he's doing an amazing, amazing job. You're, I tell you, you thrill me every time I see you up there, uh, just the joy that you have. And, and I tell you, you've grown so much, not just in height, but you've grown. <laughs> just seeing you serve the Lord and just see what God's doing in your life. But we want to bless you this morning. Amen. God bless you. I said I was going to bless some young, young people. Merle, come here. Yeah. I said I was going to bless young people today. I just feel like blessing you, Merle, because you're always faithful. You're always coming in here happy. I always call you my troublemaker. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we love you. Thank you for being who you are. And uh, many of you don't know this, but every time my brother would go on vacation, he would come back with a hat from Merle. <laughs> and uh, about a month ago, um, his son, uh, my brother's son, is in um, Liberty, Liberty University. Amen. And cheering up there. But he was, he was out on, on the track, I believe, just running, running on the track. And then uh, uh, her grandson that would come sit with her stops Mason and says, hey, I think I know you. <laughs> and like, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. He's like, what's your name? And he's like, Mason Shipman. And he goes, I know your dad. <laughs> and, uh, and they took a picture, sent it to me. But uh, what a blessing. What a blessing. Thank you, Merle, for being here. Tell the hat lady. Yeah, tell the hat lady. Amen. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Before we leave today, what an amazing service. And what would be more amazing is if someone would give their heart to the Lord. The greatest miracle is receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And today, I want to give you an opportunity. I don't know where you're, you're at in your faith. But today is the day of salvation. And I really believe the Lord is calling you today, saying today is the time that you come home. Today is the day. And if that's you, you say, Pastor, will you pray with me? I want to give my heart to the Lord. I recognize I haven't been serving Him. I recognize I haven't been living for Him. But today, I want to give my heart to the Lord, and I want to receive Him as my Lord and Savior. If that's you today, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand, and I, I want to see your hand go up so I can pray with you this morning. On the count of three, would you raise your hand? One, two, three. Raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. I see your hand back there. Thank you. I see your hand there. With every head bowed, just, church, will you say this prayer with those that raised their hand, that are making the greatest decision of their life? Will you say this prayer with us? Heavenly Father, I come today as a sinner in need of a Savior. I recognize the price you paid on the cross for me. And I receive you today as my Lord and as my Savior. I thank you for the life you have promised me. And today, I want to live that life that you have for me. Teach me, guide me, and direct me from this day forward and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise.